Not everyone has a dedicated YouTube studio. Most of us have to figure out how to use different rooms in our home to film. That's why sometimes you see me in my kitchen, sometimes in my living room, sometimes in my bedroom, once in my bathroom. Today I wanna to talk about how to set up three different looks for your at-home YouTube studio. Just using these little lights, some modifiers, and a few other things I have kicking around my home. Let's get lighting. So Jian contacted me about this light to see if I wanted to do a review and I, I was pretty excited. It's the RGB 60 watt uh, X60 light from them. Uh, they also sent me this, which is a Bowens mount adapter and that's super convenient. And then this cute little guy here, which is a little softbox and a grid. Uh, the grid comes out, which is awesome too. Uh, so this was all stuff that they had sent over because I was trying to think of uh, different things I could do with the video and when they first suggested the light, I thought to myself like, I think I need a little more functionality out of this light. So something like this little softbox and this Bones mount ad adapter kind of just make it very, very versatile. Um, there's lots of other videos you can go to to see all the specs and to see cool, you know, slow-mo footage of this, but it really is a beautiful light. It's really fun to use and um, yeah, I don't really have anything super negative to say about it. Uh, everything I've done with it so far, it's, it's kept up with everything I need. I think maybe the only thing is I wish the battery lasted a little longer, but I don't know. I mean, it's pretty convenient that you can charge it. And you can also use this as a charging block, which is pretty cool too. So you can charge your iPhone off of this little charging block if you need to, if you're in a pinch, which is kind of dope. So let's take this and the, the CX100, which I have already from them and put them into the real world and see what we can do. So let's get right into it. Setup number one is the Tech Bro YouTube setup. Now, if you've watched any tech videos with bros in them or any camera gear videos, you probably know why I'm calling it that because that is the look. How are we lighting this? We have our Molus X60, which is acting as our key light. I just have that little soft box on it and then I threw another layer of diffusion over it. It's literally on 1%. I have it at a 5,500 Kelvin um, setting and it, it's like, it's crazy how powerful this 60 watts is. That's actually, you know, the only thing I would say is that it would be nice if they could dial it in a little bit more so that at 1%, it actually feels like a true 1% of the 60 watts. I think that's probably pretty difficult to do, um, but it's just, it's such a powerful light. I was actually gonna use the uh, X100 uh, from them to do that as my kind of main light here. And then I was gonna throw the, um, the RGB functionality of this X60 in the back as a kicker with some light, but I just, I realized like more and more the X60 is just doing everything I need it to. So it's, it's pretty convenient. And honestly, I think it's form factor and stuff, even though it's very similar to the, the, uh, the X100, I just, I really enjoy using this light so far and maybe just cause it's new, but, but it's been working really well for everything I've been using it for. So instead I just took a couple of cheap little Amazon you know, RGB lights that I happen to have kicking around. I threw them in the back. I put a gimbal in the back. I've got, you know, I think set deck is important too. Like when you're thinking about how you want this to look like having, you know, various gear around you. We're actually, this looks so silly. I know my, um, my shotgun mic died. And so I wanted to use the, the Rode little wireless go, but I didn't want to clip it to me because I just didn't, I don't know. I don't like that look necessarily. But I thought this would be very funny and sort of like a, an homage to Taylor Jackson, who always clips all of his mics to, to old cameras. So this is my Minolta X700. Very happy with this camera. Very excited. I just picked it up and it's also a great mic holder. So that's good. So I can get away with a laptop with this kind of tech bro vibe. But what's great is that I have it on a white screen here and I can just use this to dial in my amount of lighting I want on this side. The most difficult part about creating this kind of YouTube space is the fact that you really need to have control over your ambient light. So I've got tons of windows around me right now and that makes it really, really difficult. It means that I basically can only film this kind of stuff at night. Other than completely blacking out all of my windows, I don't really have any other choice. But keep in mind that you're gonna be kind of adjusting your schedule if you have a lot of light that you have to kind of cut out or you're gonna have to invest in some like blackout curtains or something like that, which if you like this vibe and you like this look, then maybe it's worth it to you. I definitely understand the appeal. And I think because we've seen so much of it, people want it as well. So it's sort of like a self-fulfilling prophecy, I guess, or I don't know. I don't know a lot of prophecies. Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we have what I call like the light and airy YouTube look. Uh, this one's, I think, a lot more achievable because most people's homes 
are fairly light. Like usually people have pretty light walls, white walls or like an off-white or a gray or something like that. It makes it pretty easy to achieve this kind of look. You can also film it during the day. You don't need like a million different lights. You don't have to absolutely perfectly control all the lighting around you just to be able to get the look like you do in that first look. You're probably not popping off any crazy RGB colors or anything like that. It's just simple, clean, everything's set to daylight and we're just trying to get that nice, clean look. I think the key here with set decoration is just to keep things really, really simple and clean. Um, back here, we have like some tchotchkes and stuff that are kind of sitting on this with some some different pictures and frames. Just, just kind of like building that kind of like feeling like, okay, we're at home with Chris. And that's the key. Uh, I absolutely, completely took apart my living room in order to do this, but this is a fairly easy setup, all things considered, because you don't need a lot of special stuff. You probably have everything you need. Other things you could do would be to incorporate things like um, like coffee table books in the background. You know, I have a lot of photography books, so those would look good back there. Uh, plants. Now we have gotten to the point where our cat has destroyed almost all of our plants, and the ones that we do have left are fairly fragile, so I don't want to move them. But but you know, we we could try something. So so just wait one sec. All right, so now we've got like a cute little plant. We've got a nice little SLR camera there because everybody loves film now. I do too, film's fun. I'm excited to play with it more actually. Uh, some books, stuff like that. We're, we're, we're just kind of like building out a scene a little bit and we're, we're framing me and everything, but we're keeping right behind me very, very simple. Um, it's just creating that nice, clean, simple aesthetic that, that we're shooting for. Okay, so I know this looks a little dark, but this is the easiest way to not blow everything out so you can still see it. I have the 60 watt RGB Cobb fill light here that is bouncing into this big white umbrella and that's pushing everything back onto me. Over here, you can see that I have this CX100 and that is just pushing a little bit of light on the side. Like I said, this is the whole setup. This C stand here is what was holding my mic, which I am now holding myself. So if you're a YouTuber out there or you're thinking about starting a channel or something and you need like just like a nice clean aesthetic, this is how I would do it. Two lights. We've got the X60 right here pumping in at 80%. We've got the CX100. They're both daylight balanced and we're just getting nice clean light. I've created kind of like a triangle of tchotchkes uh, to try and give something to the frame. And I'm, I'm probably about three feet out from that. And that's it. Really, really simple. Light and air YouTube look. So next up is what I call like the Netflix documentary look. It's dark, it's moody, it's intense. It's like they're interviewing somebody who was a part of some crazy crime organization who was like, you know, a, uh, a lackey for the big pit boss. And they're keeping it all like moody and mysterious. So what I have here is I have the Molus X60 uh, just right over to the side here, almost at the same angle as I have the camera. You can almost imagine like I wouldn't be looking at the camera if I was using the second angle. It's almost like I'd be talking to this camera the whole time and I would just be getting this second angle here to kind of help out. Very, very simple. We're filming from the shadow side right now. That means that we only really need to use one light. Um, we could have a light in the back to motivate something if we wanted to, but for this setup and where we're at and how tight everything is, we're not gonna use that. We got the Molus X60 doing its thing over here. It's set to like 1% power. I have the little soft box with the grid on it and that's it. I've feathered it so it's not completely on my face. Uh, it's basically just kind of like hitting here over so I can still create that more dramatic shadow side. And that's it, really, really simple. I think it's a cool look. Um, it's not something I would necessarily use for my YouTube videos, but if you're trying to create a lot of suspense, something that's very heavy and intense, this would be a good second angle, and your main angle is where you would focus. So this would be your A-cam. So the way we have this set up is very simple. I've just got the Molus X60 on the side here. It's feathered just a little bit to the side, but it's still creating that kind of um, split lighting, uh, which is a very classic technique. And then on the right side here, I've actually just pulled in a little bit of um, a black Bristol board. And what that is doing is just helping to suck up a little bit of light on this side so we get that more dramatic shadow just like we did in the first shot. So again, we're just trying to motivate um, that B cam shot with this A cam shot. All right, so switching to the beautiful iPhone footage here. Um, so you can see this is literally the setup. We've got, uh, we've got a mic, we've got our tiny little X60, and we've got the camera over here, and that is it. That is our B camera, second angle, close up look. Very simple. If you're looking to do like a super moody, kind of like filmic cinematic look, this could be how you could do it. All right, so there you have it. Three different fun setups. 
We got the light and airy. We've got the YouTube tech bro, and we've got the Netflix style YouTube studio all in one room, all using just two lights and some different modifiers and that kind of thing. So this is a, a way off the beaten path. Let's consider this like a fun little extra because there's nothing about this lighting setup that makes any sense. This light here, uh, which is the CX100, and that is set to its basically warmest setting. So it's actually warmer here than the lighting behind me. There's something off there, right? Right away when you look at this scene, you, your, your eyes know that you're looking at something that couldn't really exist without weird modifications to light. Not just that, but we have this crazy blue color cast here. That's coming from the, the X60 that's beside me. It's set to 194 degrees in its HSL um, setting, and it's bouncing against a piece of wood that is actually quite warm, so that's creating a slightly more greenish hue, and that is bouncing back onto me when it hits this white wall mixed with our daylight color temperature setting that we're using for white balance. We're getting this strange cast. We're getting a little bit of that on my side here too. But then we also have daylight behind me and that's kind of spilling in on the back and um, that, that none of it makes sense. But what's cool is that you can use these lights in so many creative ways that you can start to create looks and feels that sure, they're not gonna pass as like real life, but they might be something really interesting for your viewers to, to look at and try and understand. You could build a whole look for your channel off of something very strange and different like this. And, and I think it could be a kind of cool way to stand out. Let me know in the comments what you think. I really appreciate y'all watching and I will talk to you soon. Peace.